Welcome back again ladies and gents, this is episode 2 of the wrecked Honda CD175 engine that's been sat in somebody's garden, uh, and literally had a funnel in the top I think and all the water's gone into it and completely killed it. Uh, I'm taking it apart, A, to see what it's like inside generally, and, and B, to see if there's anything I can do with it. Okay, so as we left it last time, that stuff's to go in the parts cleaner and I am literally, yes I'm using a metal screwdriver in the cylinder ball, but look at the state of it. So let's put a little bit of light on just to help us out. I'm just literally trying to hook out the worst crud before I put in some penetrating fluid. Yeah, look at that, it's just snotty, isn't it? Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, and this one that's that's proper welded that is. Chances of this block coming off are remote, I think. But there we go. All said and done, at the end of the day, if I get nothing out of this whatsoever, I still have some nice engine panels I can clean up and polish and return back to its their former glory. And I can use them in the future for whatever purpose. There we go, I've got some nice crank cases there, top and bottom. Uh, there we go. So, okay, I'm just going to put you back on the stand there. I'm going to try, oh, no, I'm going to penetrate it first. Ooh, uh, missus, that sounds really bad. We'll get this stuff in the shed and see if I can clean a few of the panels up. Well, whilst letting that lube soak in there and do its stuff. I'm not holding out any hope for that at all. As you can see, it's completely it's a completely seized engine. Absolutely solid as a rock. But you never know, do you? Okay, might even try a bit of diesel in I've got a bit of diesel, actually. I'm going to pour a bit of diesel in there. All right, guys, thanks for looking. Uh, uh, back to the shed okay operation let's knock the block off has begun i've been around the the join there with uh, a bit of lube um i started off using me, me toffee equalizer but i've gone on to me heavy duty one and i've literally been tapping and put, sort of trying to pull and i've finally broken that seal on the gasket so things are looking up you don't want to hit this with anything metallic because they will just splinter and shatter. And that'll be the end of that. Need to be quite forceful with it. Seems to have stopped now. Oh well, let's carry on, eh? That's nice. The front's <coughs> the front split. I just need to split this back in. I don't want to get Jimmy in under there because he's just going to break these fins off like twigs. Uh, what are we doing with this cam chain? Is that holding up any proceeds? I don't think so. thing is on a normal day and then pistons being nice and slidey and not seized <coughs> this would just lift off of there easily but where the pistons are seized and everything else is seized the pistons are seized in the bores of course the crankshaft seized so you're, you're trying to pull up everything whilst achieving nothing I've given these pistons a bit of a, a bit of a tap just to break seals there. I've got a little bottle of diesel. I had some diesel in the bores, what's left of them. Whilst I went and had a spot of lunch. A nice prawn sandwich. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay. Alright, let's carry on with the aggression then. Yes, I've split the back. And 
here she comes. But the pistons are holding on for dear life. So I'm going to try and... Everything's falling on the floor. Just going to try and... Just break that seal. I'm probably pissing in the wind, but... Here we are. Never say die, chaps, eh? Not too hard. Are there any alloy pistons in the gate? Right, let's give it a bit more. Equalisation. Well, it's split right round now. The gasket's split right round. So, the only thing holding this block on is the pistons. So I've just got to persevere with it. I'm going to keep banging away at it for all I'm worth. And uh, I'll turn you back on in a bit. Okay. Right, well, I've been banging away with, with all my heart here. And look. Can you see that there? So the only thing holding this in are those two seized, stubborn pistons. What I'm going to try now... So I'm going to try and get some sort of lollipop sticks, something wooden in there, in those gaps, all the way around, and just gently tap on the top of these, the crowns of these pistons, just see if I can break that seal, because that's the only thing stopping this block coming off. Oh, it's getting exciting, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Come on, you, give it up. Right, well, as luck would have it, I have a load of these, the little petitions for uh, part boxes. And they're quite, they're wafer thin, they're probably two mil, probably two mil thick. So I'm going to wedge these in, oh, left, right, front and back. So when I tap now on the top of these pistons, they should, they should break. Am I being optimistic here or what? No, I'm wrecking the garden here. Where I've been banging away so hard, all my, my tool have fallen on the floor. Oh, stop it. Right. Let's give these a bit of a tap, see if we can get any movement in my pistons. They are in there, aren't they? They are proper. Proper stuck. We've managed to get this up so far. Ooh, there, misses. Therefore, the wedges are in. Therefore, they should go back down again, shouldn't they? Okay. But we're not getting anywhere fast. I don't want to put too much. I don't want to put too much on these. Not a lot happening, is there? There's an awful lot of crap in there still. We'll sort of airline that out, but then again, that stuff was going to go all over them, all over the gazebo and everywhere. So, yes, I shouldn't be using a metallic item in the bore, but you've all seen what, what I'm up against there. So, I'm sure it's not going to hurt. Let's put some more, let's try and blast it out, a bit of lube. Go on, buzz off. Right, let's turn it around so that's a little bit more vertical, so to speak. <sighs> I thought that would just loosen them off but then again I suppose if I left that overnight to have a good soak what do you reckon I'm gonna go tomorrow hmm not sure when it goes there'll be a change in tone all right tone how you doing Just gentle gentle taps OK, 
Okay, that's good. That's a constant noise, isn't it? There's nothing different about that. That's some accuracy, isn't it? Used to be a drummer. Oh, no, I didn't. Right, I think I'm going to give it an hour and then come back and have a look at it, see how far, see if I can give it a bit of persuasion. Right, catch you in a bit. Never let it be said that I chuck the towel in. Found a load of these, like I said, little spaces, little segment petitions for a thingy. What I've been doing is I started off with one in there, and then I managed to wedge two in, in each side, front and back, then three, then four, and so on, and sort of going like that. Okay, and then tapping that home to increase this side, and then I'm going at it again, banging as hard as I possibly can on this side. I think you'll agree those pistons are further down than they were earlier so I'm kind of getting there aren't I perseverance millimetre at a time hush my children hush this is getting loose again here so I should be able to bang another one in. Never throw anything away. Right, that's, that's max displacement because I haven't got any more. Right, we definitely, they're definitely going down. Definitely. Sprayed all under there, where the bore carries on into the block there. I've sprayed all around there because it is rather rusty, isn't it? And I'm literally, that's a whole can of lube. I don't normally have that trouble. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're getting there. Can you see that gap now? I don't know if you can see that or not. That's some proper gap, that isn't it? Okay, let's try some more. That's definitely coming up. All my spaces have fallen out, my packers. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. I don't do any damage to that block, so I'm just being very gingerly with it. It's literally just those flipping pistons. Right, I'm going to wang these in the front. If I can, yes I can. Just take them home a bit. And then give it a good bang in from behind. <laughs> oh, wrong hammer. Never mind. More tools on the floor. Yeah, that's coming up. I'm coming up. I want the world to know. Perseverance, what you need if you want to be a record breaker. All right, let's have some of them out of there. 
Oh, come on. I've got to have a couple of pieces of wood that size. Bear with. Right, after persistent banging, um, I have movement on my crankshaft. It's not a lot, but it is movement, and I can show you that. Look at this mechanism here, look. See that moving? Okay, I'll, I'll grant you it's not moving a lot, but it's definitely moving. So I'm going to try my 14mm spanner breaker bar on this generator side again and see if I can get that turning over. If I can, it should pull or push these pistons up or thereafter down. Right, that has taken an age. Let's put my spanner on the big one. I don't want to over tighten that. I don't want to shear off. Oh well, it was uh, worth a try. It's still, it's still movement, isn't it? No matter which way you look at it. Yeah, it's definitely movement there. And I'm sure I can see a little bit of bore now, where they've gone down literally a couple, only a couple of mil, but they have receded. I've been banging these wedgings in, mallet in the side, mallet in the front, putting more wedges in, and I'm up now, about 11 mil gap now between the block and the engine casing itself. So I'm getting there, but by jolly, it's, it's tough work. <sighs> Might go and get myself a brew, actually. Right. Oh, onwards and upwards. Where are we on? That's not bad, is it? Already. Not bad at all. Someone's tried to paint that, haven't they? Obviously, in this, it was... I don't think that was Mr. Honda's paint. I don't know. Comment below if you think it is. Not bad at all, is it? Look at that. Ooh, that's not a blob, that's just a blob. That's pretty cool, that, isn't it? Not bad at all. Well worth the effort and the time, isn't it? Right. I keep going on about the cleaning process. Do you want to watch? Let's stick you up there. Yeah. Ah, you're comfortable? Sitting comfortable? Right. Let us begin. If you haven't got a parts cleaner uh, in your shed, I would thoroughly recommend it. It's the most used tool in my shed. Anyway, all I've got is a really knackered out old wire break. Look how knackered that is. I really need to invest in something new. I've got about four or five of these, but these are no good because they're steel. They're not brass. Brass uh, steel will score aluminium. Okay, so I've got that little devil there for the stubborn stuff, and literally a couple of the old toothy peg brushes. That's all, and a little tiny flat blade screwdriver just to get out anything that's really cruddy. Right, let's let's crack on with my pink toothbrush. Which one is this? This is the right hand side. Clutch cover. Look at the state of that. Look. I've spread. I've squirted some fluid in it. Left it ten minutes. You can actually see the tide mark of how full this engine was with water. It's terrible, isn't it? Right. Let's get cleaning. Put the radio on very quiet because. YouTube told me off because I'm broadcasting. I'm broadcasting music. Well, I'm fucking not, am I? I'm just gonna shit. <clears throat> anyway, I um, well, can't say too much because I haven't put that video out yet, have I? Stupid boy. I won't say any more then. I shall keep quiet. La di da. What's off? La -dee -dee. La -dee -dee. I'll just go over it once, very roughly, just to see what I'm dealing with, see where there's 
any real big collections of sludge. It needs a proper, proper brushing. This, incidentally, this orangey, rusty colour stuff there, all this bit here, I can take some of it off with the old toothy peg brush, but uh, most of it requires a bit of a, a bit of a brass brush. So I'm not sure how we're going to fare with my brass brush being there absolutely on its last hairs. It's really not looking very good at all, is it? <laughs> Well, we'll see how we get on. I know this is boring. If, if it, well, no, it's not. See, I love it. This part of the build, or the whatever I'm doing, this is the most rewarding part. You put something in this little grey box here, turn it on, wish your toothbrush around for an hour, and what comes out is absolutely fantastic. Yes, there are people selling panels on eBay, you know, for sort of 40, 50 quid, whatever. Some new old stock ones for like 150 quid. But goodness me, a fucking toothbrush and a bit of paraffin. Have a go. It is so rewarding. Shocked, I tell you, it's absolutely fandabby darzy. And when the dirt literally falls off, it's crud and that right before your eyes. Right, what is in my parts cleaner? Well, it is. A, a mixture of sort of white spirit, paraffin, a uh, little bit of brake cleaner. Uh, that's pretty much it really, and a, and a few little, little bits and bobs thrown in. You can't put too much in there. Ooh. Because Obviously the little pump pumping this fluid out. Any little plastic thing, so with a little filter on it. You start putting things like thinners in there. A, you probably pass out from the fumes. And B, it'll probably eat the seals away in there and then it'll stop working, won't it? Lay your body down. I thought I'd just do this little bit of a video, just actually seeing me getting me getting me hands dirty, and because I've never, I don't think I've actually filmed myself doing this before. I'm sure some of you are thinking, yeah, he's, he's, he's had that panel, you know, here's the before and after photos. He's, he's, he's gone down, he's gone down that, that shot blasting firm down the road and got him, got him vapor blasted. I've got nothing better to do at the moment. Do it yourself, like right? do it yourself. Save yourself some pennies. Do, 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 do. I mean, I'm not getting my hands dirty. These are black mamba gloves. They're the only sort of, uh, what do you call it, latexy type gloves that are resistant to all the crap I've put in this fluid. This fluid. The blue ones, they just, and the white ones, they just literally rot and droop off your fingers and end up being a part of the of the material. So black mamba, if you wanna, okay, they're a bit expensive, a little bit more than than I'd like to pay, between sort of 13 and 15 pounds for a box of 100, but they do last a while, and. Protect your little fingies, don't they? I should really have eye protection on. I've got a brush here and brushes, don't they? But oh, you know, I've been doing this enough, long enough now to know which way to brush and which way. Oh shit! I've got some in my eye. Only joking. Yeah, it's not nice when you get it in your eyes. If, probably not that I know because I've never done it before. Right. Well, that's a quick once over. Look, that's the beauty of a toothbrush that you can get right in your nooks and crannies. Oh, I'll just pause you there, but look. From what that was with the tide mark, oh, you can still see the tide mark because that needs a brass brush. I'll just show you. Oh, I couldn't get that off with the, with the toothbrush. A little bit of agitation. 
with a brass brush. And there you go. Uh, got no hairs left on me brush. What I might do is actually cut up, cut that off there, so I'll have that bit there to use. But there we go. Now you see it. Now you don't. It's good, isn't it? Right. Well, I've now got all the rest of it to do, and it's not very good, is it? So. Use me rag, rag of plenty. I don't know, I dropped it probably. Right, I'll pause you there. I need a rag there, don't I? To touch my phone. Oh my gosh, where is it? Bear with, bear with. Right, until I see you again, keep scrubbing. Take care, guys. See you in a Cower, flipping bunger. What's that light on? Go away, light. Done it. I've got the block off the engine. Was it easy? No, it wasn't. It was bloody tough. Did I enjoy it? Yes, of course I did, because I always do, don't I? Right, let's take a look. That fought me every inch of the way. Oh my gosh. Can't really see how gooey they are. Have you ever heard pistons make that sound before? Where's my rag gone? Mucky fingers again. But anyway, yeah, this... Oops. This uh, Conrod is is the seized thing. Uh, this one uh, is seized as well. But it makes doesn't make a noise like this one does. <laughs> anyway, I think we can chalk that up as a bit of a victory it's off isn't it it's only taken me a day that's all millimeter by millimeter for half a day it didn't move uh, I tried heat on it I had the heat gun going around the head uh, I mean that may have jarred it if you think about it I mean uh, you know the piston bores they're steel the piston rings are steel and, and the pistons are aluminium so until I get them in the parts cleaner and have a look at them, I ain't got a clue what's going on with them. But there we are, it's off. I am going to have a brew, sit down, put my feet up and upload another video for you guys. Yes, the bike passes MOT, but then you already know that because you just watched the video before I've just said this. So. Anyway, take it easy, catch you in a bit. Alright kiddo, are you alright? Say hello to your friends. <laughs> no, these friends, not them ones. <laughs> How you doing, guys and girls? Got the block off, as you saw, and I've just managed to get the pistons off. What a complete and utter... Yeah, I, I, I concur. That was, I tell you. Anyway, can't really see a lot because it's too sunny. And I, I managed to squirt some oil in there, and I've got to, managed to get a little bit of movement. Yeah, only a little bit, though, wasn't it? Yes. So, uh, yeah, the crank sort of goes forward and backwards a bit. I've got a feeling it's in gear. That's why it only goes a little bit. So, that's staying as is for a bit. Let's have a little walk inside the shed of doom. <laughs> when you do a job, when you do any job, like this, this kind of thing, you always have a low point. This is the low point of this engine disaster. Right, yes I did, you know, I have said, I have said I never use a hammer in, in anger. I did, I broke the, I broke the law, didn't I? The carnal law. So, uh, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to give these a clean, in the parts cleaner. Now, pistons are shot, for want of a better word. They were literally they were rust seized. I mean those pins, obviously you 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 heat. Well, you, uh, I think they're, they're com a compression fit, aren't they? You you easy for me to say, isn't it? You freeze these so they shrink tiny, then you whack them in, and there they go. The there was only three pins uh, clips out of the. There should have been four, two in each piston. There was only three. So God knows what's happened to this poor little engine. There's signs of. Heat damage on one of these. Where is it? Not that one. 
And it wasn't me, I can tell you. Where is that swagger? Oh, I think it might be there. Pretty black. Anyway, I've beat them to death, so they are going up. They're, they're going to be ornaments now. Perhaps a, I don't know, an ashtray or something. <laughs> ashtray. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty shice, isn't it? So there, right. So we've got a head to tack off and look at them valves and everything. Get that owl out of there. I can clean this up and the parts cleaner. No, I've broken the fins. Oh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to file that. Put a little bit of a curve on there so it looks like it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> oh, I've got lots to clean in here, look. All this guff. Got this to clean and everything. It's just freaking horrible, isn't it? I knew this was going to be... I, I, I didn't have any expectations at all, fairness. It wasn't one of those, oh, do you know what? I can restore this and get it going again. Never in a million years. Uh, seriously. But when I sort of got the top off and side panels off and things started to sort of move and give a little bit, you, know, you kind of you got that 1% in the back of your head thinking, do you know what? I could, I could do this. But no. It is uh, It's a load of paperweights, isn't it, really? But there we go. Ah. Uh, Still going to clean the bits up. The side panels, uh, the engine casings are fantastic. Uh, there's going to be a few other bits and bobs I can I can salvage for spare parts. So yeah, it's, it's not all doom and gloom, is it really? Okay. Uh, do I need a brew? No, I need a big pint of beer. Big pint of beer, way. Okay, I think that's enough for one day, don't you? Absolutely flipping caked. Anyway, it's good to see you all, and thanks for your comments again. This is a uh, Bit of a fun thing, really, isn't it? Okay, right, until next time, keep it loud and proud. Stay at that bottom scraper ring, that. Proper dead, I think this, uh, I think this engine internally flipping imploded. Don't you? <laughs> I think I saw a crack actually. There's a head there soaking. I've put one of those Duff spark plugs in that hole. Come to some use, hasn't it? 
and uh, this is the chamber that was completely and utterly rusted. That's the one that with the valve open, and this is one with the complete set. So I'm going to see if how long that lasts in there. Right, let's have a look at this one. We've got the end of a ring there. We've got a huge gap here, which that shouldn't be, so a piece is broken off. Oh dear, I'm not sure what's going on there, to be fair. Oh my days. Yeah, it's flipping. There's another, there's a join there, look. Absolutely duff, aren't they? They are absolutely mullered. Sure I can make something out of that. No, I don't know, a duck egg cup or something? I don't know. But there we go. They're pretty scored anyway. They would not have gone back into an engine. Look at that. Oh, that's like a bit of... It's like a bit of an aluminium with grooves in it. <laughs> What's the side like on this one? Yeah. It's gouged. That has been screamed to death, hasn't it? Oh well. I got them out. I didn't... There was one point I thought, you know what? They're just not coming out. They are just not coming out. But there we are. Good old Honda, you fought to the bitter end, didn't you? <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, I'm, that's it now, I'm definitely going. Look at my state of my hands. Had enough for one day, going. Let that soak overnight and I'll have another crack at it tomorrow. Whew, well, I've salvaged a few parts, so jobs are good, isn't it? It's something to do in this lockdown. There's nothing else to do, is there? Okay, guys, take care. Good day, one and all. Well, I have, as we've decided that this engine is little more than a boat anchor, proposed by many. Thanks, Kevin Bryan. Uh, you're quite right. It is. Uh, it's been. I think it's been run dry, and it's just been screamed until it ceased. And that's basically what's happened. You've got the burn marks around the pistons. All the all the rings are melted into the piston itself. Um, there we have it. And there was little oil in it. More water. More water than oil. So. What am I going to do with it? Quite simply, I can save the head, hopefully. So I can save that as spares. And I have many more spares. This was completely seized. Absolutely completely seized. I wish I'd have filmed it before and freed it off. So that is a cam chain tensioner, so I can clean that up. There are a few bits and bobs I'm going to keep. But basically, it's the engine panels. Let's take a little walk out here to where the remains of the block is. There we go, let's just stuff that under there before the wind takes it away. So basically I have two beautiful engine cases. So I'm going to strip everything else out. What is completely dead is going in the skip. The crankshaft is seized and the conrods, they're knackered. But I might keep the magneto, the, yeah, is that magneto? What is that? It's obviously magnetised, isn't it? Uh, to create the electricity. I think that's cooked. Might keep the basket if I can make something out of that. Kickstart shaft. You know, gear shaft. I'm going to see what it's like inside. Uh, but then, what I want to do basically, what, what I'm going to with this is, I've always wanted to metal polish. I have some of the little wax sticks of different colours, and I have purchased a bench, sort of like an angle grinder, but with with the puffy wheel on it, the the fluffy wheel to, to polish metal. I've never done it. I've watched a few videos on YouTube, and the way these guys turn out uh, engine panels. To, to such a high mirrored standard. I want to do that. I love doing metal work. So I have top and bottom engine uh, uh, cases there and I have the side panels uh, and all the rest of it. So I can keep, mirror them up best I can and keep them for spares. You never know. I mean, they're not damaged at all. Um, right, so from boat anchor to spare part metal polishing. Let's do it. Right, let's get going, shall we? I've got my tray out from behind the shed. This was the bottom of a very large gerbil cage, and it's awesome for putting something in that you want to clean. Now I'm going to be cleaning it with a bit of thinners before I go anywhere near this with some spanners, because it's absolutely ganky, and I want to have a bit of a bit of a clean area to work with. So I'm going to sit you up in the cradle and do a bit of filming whilst I do a bit of cleaning. How's that? Can't see further than that. Okay. Yeah, good old thinners. I buy it from Niddles, this stuff. I'm not advertising or anything. But literally, give it a good splash. Let's get in there. 
evaporates quite quickly this stuff sadly but it's going to get the main bulk of the crap off isn't it look at that actually good job i paused then wasn't it god yeah old burpee's back at it splash it all over henry Whoa. Who remembers Henry Cooper and all that? You know, I've decided to put it in a receptacle and just brush it on from there as opposed to just pouring it out because you waste so much like that. It's not even funny. But yeah, you know, I thought to myself, well, at the end of the day, if that barrel and pistons were, you know, okay, it'd just been like taken out of a bike and left and filled it with water that way then you know yeah fair enough I'll have a crack at trying to get it going but that is beyond economical repair they would say but the thing is if it was any other bike sort of thing in a modern bike they're uh, easily accessible aren't they parts and because these are getting a bit thin on the ground anything is worth saving isn't it just as a spare you know, it's, uh, I hate throwing things away, especially when I've got a bike of the same make sort of thing. So I do have quite a lot of spares in the old shed of doom there. Oh, shit. Oops, I swore then. Pound jar. Yeah, it's very magnetic. Look at that. Well, at least I'm not going to lose me dowels, am I? Just give it a good licking, just to get the grease off. And then I don't get so mucky, or the surroundings don't get so mucky, when I'm doing the strip down. Okay, well I won't bore you with this anymore. Next time you see me, I'll be wearing the spanners. Right. Well, I whizzed all the bolts out with the super duper impact and we've split the case, took a couple of taps with a little tiny mallet and it literally fell apart. But look at the state of this. This is the backside with the fuel pump, uh, the oil pump attached plunger of the uh, clutch basket. Look at the tide mark. Unbelievable. And honestly, look how skanky. That is. It does look like it's been in the sea for about five years, doesn't it? It really does. Proper scabby. Anyway, I'm going to take off uh, this selector mechanism and I'm going to then split them completely and have another look and I'll take a few photographs because that is just skank, isn't it? Oh, honest to God. <laughs> Nothing that won't clean up though. Alright, take it easy. Okay, there are the two cases popped open. Look at this, look at the flipping magnet on there. Oh, get off. This is proper, proper skanky, isn't it? Well, all I'm after is the two housings which are in great condition apart from they're completely scabby but you know what i'm saying it's alloy it's nothing snapped off or broken the threads are really good look at those threads fantastic so i'm just going to give take all these gears off you see you got that you got the little uh, spiral splines there to centrifugally oh, this is the kickstart shaft obviously when you kick it, it throws this gear in to engage with this gear and then it's supposed to slide back that way and disengage with this gear to go in between those two just so it doesn't uh, catch anything there's the old selector god oh dear that is proper isn't it proper mank mank mungus I've already found a few metal there's like an inch of scuzz in there I've already found a few metal things flowing around in there that I've put in the box. There's a sort of, I think that's the remains of a spring. 
But yeah, there we go. So the engine is now split. I need to take everything out, the crankshaft, all the, the lace shaft and all the rest of the gears out the gearbox and just see what I'm left with. Take everything off, bits and bobs, nuts and bolts and screws, engine's cleaning out. Try and tap that, that's a gear shaft selector. Comes right through. Right. Oh, I don't know. It's all good fun, isn't it? Beautiful day as well for it. Absolutely. What more can you ask for? A glass of beer, perhaps? Who knows? Hey, right, guys, take it easy, and we'll be back in a bit. Right, I've just lifted the crankshaft. That's the crankshaft. Out of the crank bearing housing. Crank housing there. And I've got signs of scoring on these middle two shells, if you like. Uh, but what I can't understand is you've got locating dowel, locating dowel, and two holes for locating dowels for the four, it's a four bearing crank, so there's the locating dowel would line up in that, and obviously this is the bearing that spins around, so this surface stays still with this surface, and the, and the bearing rotates. But these two centre ones, no pins have fallen out anywhere, and they're not in the holes there. I'm just wondering if these middle two... I don't know, I can't work it out, because that should have dowels in, as does the outer one. Correct me if I'm wrong, lads. Can you, Those of you that have worked on these engines, can you fill me in on this? I don't... And, see, the outside one's got locator and that, and the two centre ones have, but they weren't located with these, and there are no pins. Are there supposed to be pins in there? If you could drop me a drop me a line. Anyway, there's the this is the conrod. This is the small end, and that is the big end for the, those of you not in the know. And it's called small end and big end for obvious reasons, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a four bearing crank. You've got the outside bearing, the centre two, and then the the other bearing there. And you can tell you've got the four posts that the crankshaft sits down into and this gear drive here drives the cam chain to do the camshaft right learning all the way okay yeah drop us a line guys cheers